everyone, I'm Hannah and this video is all about how I exercise with a stoma. And this video is sponsored by Fabletics as I am a Fabletics ambassador and you may have seen on my Instagram, we've been doing like monthly themes around exercise. So the first month was about exercise and movement. And then we've had exercise and disability. And in December, the theme is exercise and mental health. But basically I wanna switch back to exercise and disability because hi, I'm disabled. I have a stoma and I also exercise. Quick background, what is a stoma. A stoma is an artificial opening in the body where then stuff <laughs> comes out of it. My stoma is an ileostomy, so it's on the right hand side of my body and it comes out of the ileum, which is the end of the small intestine, and my poo comes out and then I have a stoma bag and the bag catches said poo. Or in medical terms, what people call what comes out of the stoma is output. Stoma output. So I had surgery to remove my colon and create a stoma back in January 2018. And then I had to have another emergency surgery in June 2018. But one of the interesting things that I found is that post surgery, now that I have recovered quite a lot, I actually exercise more now than I did before. I think there's some kind of mindset shift that maybe happened with everything that I went through of like taking care of my body. I basically like had to learn to walk again. I was just at zero. And so I had to do a lot of work to build up my strength and build up my core muscles again. And I think it's just like changed how I feel about my body. It's changed how important exercise is to me now. Like it's actually quite a high priority for me now to make sure that I am fit and healthy, that my body is recovering properly. Whereas it wasn't really something that I cared all that much about before. I don't know whether there's like something there if other people have this experience of like, if they go through a big illness or if they become disabled or if they, I don't know, they go through some huge physical change and then that changes their mindset about their body and about working out. I don't know if that's an experience that lots of other people have had too, but it's something that I've seen a lot and has also happened to me. So like I said, this video is going to be all about how I exercise with a stoma, how I built up my strength from basically nothing post-surgery to where I'm at now, the specific things that maybe I have to consider and think about in my condition when I'm exercising and what the next steps are where I can go from here. So this journey comes in four stages. Stage one, what are we working with? What is the damage? So the damage was two open abdominal surgeries in the space of six months. That is me being sliced, cut right open from above my belly button to my pubic line. Pretty intense, severe surgery. Post both of those surgeries, it was like learning to walk again. Turns out you need your core for a lot of things, like standing up, like walking, like opening a heavy door. These are all things that I really struggled with. And then the other thing that we're working with is the fact that I have a stoma. So this is my stomach. Here is my weird shaped belly button that will now never be the same again as it's been cut in half twice. But this is my scar. So it goes from all the way up here, sliced through my belly button, and then like it ends, ends like here. So both of my surgeries are in the same place. So this is my double surgery scar. And this is my stoma bag and my stoma which is this red thing is on the inside and then the bag is what catches all of the output. So this is what we're dealing with. Now, because the stoma is basically like a part of my insides on the outsides, so they have to like cut a hole in your stomach for it to come out and then they like stitch it around the outside and then it all heals up. That is technically a weakness in my abdomen, which I've been told by medical professionals that it means that I'm at a higher risk of getting a hernia. So as well as having a weak core from surgery, I also have a weak abdomen because of the stoma itself. And so as you'll see later in this video, there's lots of things that I need to consider when working out because of those things. Stage two, 
building up strength. At first, when I was in hospital, physios would visit me every day in the morning and they would try and take me for a walk around the hospital ward and I would do my very best. Actually, when I came home from surgery and I was recovering at home and trying to get back to some kind of normality, I got myself a walking stick and that was super helpful for increasing my independence and like getting me out and about and walking and moving more, whilst also letting the general public around me know that I'm a fragile person, please don't bump into me and please give me a seat on the tube, thank you. So it was a couple of months after my second surgery that I actually properly decided that I wanted to work on building up my physical strength again. This was something that I could have done way earlier, but I just mentally was like not in the place to be thinking about that or doing that at all. But by the time I finally was, I threw myself into it. If you were watching my channel last year, I was doing surgery to 5k. So I did this whole project out of it where I was like, I'm going to go from having major abdominal surgery to running 5k. And I documented that process, which you can watch in the playlist on my channel. But basically I had to start so small, start from the basics of doing really minuscule core like physio exercises that if you were looking at me doing those exercises, you would think I was just lying on the floor. It looks like I'm doing nothing, but to me and internally it is a huge workout. It is really doing something. So one of the most basic exercises that I was doing right at the beginning, you wouldn't even like know, but I am doing it like now. So it's like just activating my core, just like, activating it, rolling it, tightening it, and relaxing it. And this is quite easy for me now, but at the time it was like, whoo, <laughs> engaging these muscles that I have not engaged in ages. And then from there, I'd build up to being able to do the bridge. And so like engaging all of my core all the way along and lifting each bit and then up and then like holding that and then coming down. And this one is still hard, <laughs> not gonna lie, especially like doing it properly it's still tricky. And then more recently, I've actually been able to lift my head up when doing some of these exercises. So lifting my shoulders and my head off the ground and doing um, things like this. And I'm now gonna kick my furniture. No, we're good. I just have really short legs. <laughs> so doing these kinds of things feels good, but now I'm tired. <laughs> so, you know, when you see people working out at the gym or like doing whatever it is they're doing, don't be judging them. You don't know what their medical past is. You don't know what their situation is. I'm there as a seemingly young and fit and healthy 20 something year old lying down on the floor, struggling to do one bridge. I did a free session with a personal trainer recently and she said that I'm very flexible, but very weak. <laughs> and I was like, yup, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> So as I said, this video is sponsored by Fabletics and I'm a Fabletics ambassador. And you can use my link in the description to sign up to their VIP program where you can get two leggings for 24 pounds. And I absolutely love my Fabletics leggings. I'm wearing them right now, but damn, look how cool they are. There are so many patterns and colors and I love me some patterns and colors. These are one of my favorite pairs of Fabletics leggings because of just how high-waisted they are. Also bright red bright red, but specifically the high-waisted stuff. Mm -mm -mm. I absolutely love this Fabletics jumper as well. It's like a crop thing, so you can tighten it like this. And you got yourself a little cropped number. And then you can show off how good your butt looks as well in the leggings. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> I mean, everyone knows that leggings make any butt look amazing, so. And obviously not only do I wear my Fabletics clothes when I'm exercising, but I work from home. So my Fabletics clothes have also kind of turned into my 
I am being comfy and working from home and lounging around the house. That is also what they've become, which is great, dual purpose. One of my favorite pairs of leggings that I have from Fabletics are the ones with the phone pocket in the side of the leg. This is genius. It has changed the way that I run because I used to have one of those like bands that would wrap around my arm and I would stick my phone in that, but it would like chafe my arm. And especially if I was like running in the summer and I didn't have any like clothes on. <laughs> I did have some clothes on, obviously. It would like rub on my skin and it'd be really painful. So being able to like put my phone in my leggings pockets and then wireless headphones and can listen to podcasts, listen to music and everything. Game changer, serious game changer. So the way that Fabletics VIP membership works is that on the first of each month, new styles are released on the site and you have between the first and the fifth of each month to decide if you want to shop or skip. If you shop, then as a VIP member, you get like a ton of discounts and perks and rewards and free shipping over a certain amount. And if you skip the month, you're not charged, nothing happens, you just skip that month. If you don't shop or skip, then on the 6th, you are charged 44 pounds in credit and that credit lasts forever and then you can use that on the site to buy stuff at any time. You can also cancel your membership at any time. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with signing up, getting your two leggings for 24 pounds and then skipping and skipping or canceling. But that is basically how the VIP membership works. Between the first and the fifth, skip or shop or you get 44 pounds worth of store credit. So if you do want to sign up and get your two leggings for 24 pounds, then you can use my link in the description and thanks so much to Fabletics for sponsoring this video. Stage three, hernia support. So as I mentioned, of course super weak, but then also my stoma means that I'm at high risk of getting a hernia because I already have a weakness in my abdomen. And so I have to kind of support that to make sure I'm not working too hard and give myself a hernia. It's this really weird balance between working hard to build up the core that I've lost, but not too hard that I get a hernia. So I have <laughs> my hernia support belt. So this thing like wraps around me so tight and it feels amazing. So this is my hernia belt. Very satisfying. And basically because it's on prescription, someone came around to my house with loads of different sizes and colors and fitted me with one as a professional to be like, this will be best for you. And then ordered it and it arrived shortly after. So the way I put it on is it's like a little oven glove, very handy. And then stretch it around my core, make sure it's over my stoma. So my stoma is here. So it just basically has to cover that area. And then that's it. Everything is nice and snug. Although I would probably normally wear it underneath the outfit rather than on top. Although. I feel like with the black and the red outfit, looks great. But I don't really use it that much anymore. Bam! This thing was so useful for me at the beginning because often when I was moving around, I felt like my stomach was going to fall out. Like everything felt so weak. It felt like my scar was going to rip open. Obviously it wasn't <laughs> going to, but that's what it felt like. And having this around my stomach just made me feel secure, made me feel safe, made me feel like I could actually do things and it wasn't going to be like too strenuous on me. And then it also really helped with the feeling around my stoma of where it's like stitched and secured to my skin, like that area as well, just like feeling like, yep, no, not going anywhere, <laughs> nothing is moving. So that's my hernia support belt. And another thing that I got, which I also don't really use anymore because I don't need it as much, is a hernia support vest. So this part of the vest is like super tight. It's impossible to get over my head, I swear to God. But it is like a compression vest basically. And it does the same thing as this, but just like not as extreme as this. So this was really useful for me at the beginning. But now I've like built up enough strength in my core that I don't need these things and actually using these things would be a hindrance to me because then my body will be relying on these for support rather than building up the strength itself. If 
that makes sense. But both of these things, if you have a stoma, you can get as an NHS prescription. So that's what I did and very, very useful. And stage four, what am I doing now? Well, since doing surgery to 5K, I am still doing lots of cardio. I go for runs whenever I can, but I actually became a member of a gym. This is what I'm talking about in terms of like that mindset shift of exercise and my physical health is like a higher priority for me now than it was before. But I mostly do lots of Zumba classes at my gym and I love Zumba. I love the cardio, I love moving, I love dancing. The, the music is good sometimes. <laughs> That is like my main form of exercise that I do at the moment. But to be honest, because I'm now like in a position where my strength is built up enough that I can do lots of cardio and I can do cardio without needing like these support things, I have kind of forgotten about the core exercise stuff that I still need to be doing. So I've also recently started to go to some Pilates classes because that, includes a lot of core stuff, which is really helpful. But I definitely need to get a bit more consistent with continuing to work on my core. I can't just forget about it because I'm like dancing and running around now. So whenever I'm working out, even now that I like am stronger and don't need the hernia belt anymore, I still can't like go down to the floor like this. I have to go onto my side and then roll over. <laughs> Yay! And then to get up, I have to do the same. Roll onto my side and get up like that. Or the only way that I can actually get up is if I do some like crazy momentum, like that. But I couldn't just like do a, I'm fine. <laughs> also, you may have seen in the previous video about the decision to either get a permanent stoma or a J pouch that at some point in the future, I am going to need surgery again, but at least in theory, this time it will be elective surgery so I can choose the day and I know like when it's gonna happen. And having built up my core pre-surgery, it means the recovery will be a lot faster and a lot easier. So that's really important to me as well, knowing that I will have to have surgery again and open surgery again in the future, building up that strength and going into it as fit as possible means the recovery on the other side will be hopefully much better than my last two surgeries. I also have been flirting with the idea of getting personal training. I need to weigh up the costs of that because oh boy, it is expensive. I feel like with my situation, it might be something that is really beneficial to me but I don't know, I'll let you know what I decide if I come to any conclusions with that. But for now, I'm really happy with my running and Zumba and Pilates like combo. Thanks so much for watching this video and thanks again to Fabletics for sponsoring. Check out the link in the description for where you can sign up to their VIP program and get two leggings for 24 pounds. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let me know in the comments what kind of exercise you do and if you think personal training is worth it if you do personal training. Please help me make a decision for me. <laughs> and also go head over to my Instagram and check out the Fabletics content over there with the monthly themes. Like I said at the beginning of the video, December's theme is all about exercise and mental health. So if you have any personal stories that you feel comfortable sharing about that topic, would love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe because I make new videos every week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.